Thank you. So thank you again, everyone, for coming here today. As most of you know, we're here with an incredibly clear message from the downtown east side, which is that we do not want a single condo development in this neighborhood until no one is homeless, no one is in SROs, and no one is forced to sleep in shelters. We have a campaign right now, which is the downtown east side is not for developers. This campaign is growing as a direct result of gentrification and displacement that is happening in this neighborhood, the poorest postal code in Canada. So we have here today a, a press conference to talk a little bit about what the campaign is about. We're going to have speakers from the community, speakers from some of the different organizations that are being impacted by gentrification. We also have a couple of special guests that we're really honored to have here today. Naomi Klein and Avi Lewis are here today. <laughs> to express their support as friends of the downtown east side and Arun and Michelle are also here from Occupy Wall Street so thank you to them for being here they're also going to be speaking here at the press conference today and I'm going to ask people to please stick around because we're going to have a march that's going to go down actually to 21 Doors 21 Doors is a new condo development that is slated to open um, either today or tomorrow. So we're going to be giving them a notice of repossession. Right. We're going to be repossessing those condos for 100% resident controlled social housing. We have a gift basket for them that we're going to be delivering. They're just down the street, so I'd encourage you to, to please stick it out. Um, just a little bit about who we are and why we're here and what the community has been fighting for for years and years and years. Again, as I said, our message is very clear. We're here to say no to condo development. Two days ago, over 100 people were just down the street at the Paris Annex, occupying condos at the Paris Annex. A lot of those occupiers are here today, 24 people occupied the Paris Annex, which is owned by the Salient Group. And there was a clear message there as well, which is that we have been to city council, we have lobbied politicians, but we know that city council is bought out. We know that real estate developers are occupying city council. They're buying out the NPA, they bought out Vision Vancouver, so we've decided to occupy their real estate development. We have tried everything possible to make it clear to people that housing and homelessness in this neighborhood is a crisis. The city says that there are fewer and fewer homeless people in the downtown east side, but we know that is not true. The city's strategy is to put homeless people into shelters, into dilapidated buildings, and then say that they're off the street. We know that market housing in this neighborhood is outpacing social housing, affordable housing, at a rate of three to one. Shame. 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 Real estate developers are getting tax breaks. They're getting incentives to develop in the downtown east side. And we say shame to that. Where are the units for social housing? Where is the money for low-income people? Where's the money for services? We had to fight for the safe injection site right across the street. That was a 10-year fight for the safe injection site against the Tory government and the Harper government and the city and the municipal government. People have been fighting in this neighborhood to remain, to retain their dignity, to have this community remain a low-income neighborhood. And now we have real estate developers who are coming to this neighborhood to look for the last piece of real estate that they can turn a profit on. Let's, there is no mistake. Let us make no mistake. Real estate developers in this city are the 1%. They hold economic power. They hold political power. The biggest donations to city council this past election came from real estate developers. Yeah. Real estate developers who are building all across this neighborhood. Yeah. Right here. Sequel 138. Mark Williams. Yeah. Trying to build. Yeah. Condo development right here in the heart of Maine and Hastings. The heart of this neighborhood. Right here we have the downtown Eastside Women's Center. The safe injection site. Carnegie Community Action Project the Aboriginal front door, 
and hundreds of units of social housing. And when you look at the plan that the architects have for CEQA 138, you look at the architecture, you look at the landscape of this street, it is entirely gentrified. There's not a single homeless person in their architecture. It is clear what they're trying to do. They're trying to displace this community further and further east. Except this community has nowhere else to go. This is the low-income community in Vancouver. This is the community that desperately needs housing. So for all working people, we ask you to join us in this fight for housing. We know that Vancouver is unaffordable for all working people, all students, all artists, all single mothers. And we ask you to not participate in this race to the bottom. We ask for your solidarity in this fight for housing justice. We need you to struggle alongside us. We need you to not be complicit in displacing and impoverishing and policing downtown Eastside residents out of our own neighborhood. We need that solidarity. So we are clear to downtown east side, as downtown east side residents, to the condo developers, that there will not be a single condo development that opens up in this neighborhood without a fight. Whether it's CEQA 138, whether it's 21 Doors, whether it's the Paris Annex, whether it is any other single condo development that is going to be proposed to anyone that is going to be buying these condo developments, let it be known that you will not sleep in peace. I have one quick point, and this is an important point, because a lot of times we're asked, why are we fighting for housing when more and more people are becoming poor all across Vancouver? And why aren't we fighting for housing all across Vancouver? We're clear that we're fighting for housing in every single neighborhood. We know that housing is needed in the downtown east side and housing is needed beyond the downtown east side. And we also know that more and more people are becoming poor as a direct result of the government's policies, as a direct result of colonization. And I think today we can draw a whole lot of inspiration from what happened just a few blocks from here where over 130 Indigenous First Nations people from across BC said that not a single oil pipeline and not a single tanker is going to cross through their territories. And we know that environmental degradation of Indigenous people's lands is what causes impoverishment. That is the reason that an increasing number of Indigenous people are forced into urban areas. So in this community, we know that to stand in solidarity with homeless people and poor people also means a fight to protect the land so nobody's forced out of their homes in the first place. So the same way that those communities are saying that they have formed an unbroken wall of opposition to pipelines and tankers, we are an unbroken wall of opposition to condo developments and corporations looking to make profit off of this neighborhood. So I'm going to do a really quick chant and we're going to start with our program. When I say housing, you say now. Housing. Now. Housing. Now. Housing. Now. When I say people, you say power. People. Power. people. member of the downtown Eastside Power Women Group who is homeless and is going to be talking a bit about condos and gentrification in the city. Good afternoon everybody and thanks everybody that is here supporting us and listening to us and as you know housing is a big problem down here. Poverty is a big problem but you know it's not against the law to be poor. The government is getting richer for doing what? I say nothing and I hope you all agree. They spend all your hard-earned taxpayers' money to do what? To do nothing. And they give themselves raises to do what? To do nothing. They sit and set judgment in the city hall against us. They don't come down here and ask us. They say there's 6,000 less homeless people. I read the newspaper two days ago, and yes, I can read. And I got an education also. I am a mother, a grandmother, and a great-grandma. 
and I do live down here, and I was homeless once. And the city hall said, there's the, the, the housing gentleman, whoever his name is, said, there's 6,000 less homeless. No, there's 6,000 more homeless. You got to count. I mean, they must have an education at city hall. Do the math. Shelters are not a home. Shelters is a band-aid solution. And right here is a condo coming up. What are they going to be staring at? All the poor people coming out of the building here, my people. There's rats, bed bugs, mice running on their faces. And here's a condo. People going to be eating their dinner on their patio watching all the pornists? Come on. They don't want us in their neighborhood. We don't want them in there in ours. If we can't put up social housing in their rich neighborhood, they can't put up condos in ours. This is our neighborhood. We are human beings and we are the next generation. Where's our children living in these low-income people living down here with their children that cannot afford any food and stuff? That's our future generation. We need to fight for them too. All my relations. I'm Joan Morelli, and I have been working against developers and government since the early 70s when we predicted massive gentrification that there would be nowhere for our low-income people to live. And it's certainly true. We accuse them of being government. We accuse them of being in bed with the developers. The only thing that's changed is the beds are bigger. They're more plush. They're more comfortable. They're still in bed with the developers. And the government have their own the, the government have their own way of dealing with what they must think are scum, the poor, you know how? When they build so called housing for the poor in the downtown he said, what do they do? They take over buildings, evict the poor people, and then after they build again they say, see We've put in poor people. No, you evicted poor people already. This is a different set of poor people. And if you take the roof off of one poor person's head, you're putting a knife into all the poor people. We care about other people. We're not like you fat cats, thank you very much. We care about other people. And, and, I want you to know that the only thing that's changed, as I said, is that it got a bigger and better game to be in bed with those developers. And I'm, I'm sort of wondering, I didn't know too much about our current set of politicians, but the irony is the new cope were, were, were not somebody I understood. I understood the old cope. They must have been good. Because how many got voted in? No, we got MPA and Vision. So they must have been better than I thought they were. It seems that, you know, as, as they say, the scum rises to the top. And we certainly show it when we get electing out there. So I, I want to know that I've been here for many years and I'm going to, I'm fighting. Thank you.